Our eyes work kind of like medium angle lenses, like a 50 millimeter lens, for example. We see things kind of as medium angle shots. So it's more interesting when we do videos if we have wide angle shots and then tight shots like zoom lens shots. And if we put those two together, it's even more interesting. We might have a wide scene setting shot and then a tight shot of the same scene. Edit those together, we hold our viewer's interest. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about how you do wide and tight edits. In the next lesson, we're going to take it to the next level and do wide and tight shots with matched action. So here we're going to focus only on wide and tight shots. So go to Working Files and open up Projects and then double click on Wide Tight, 0702 Wide Tight. This project has several clips down inside this bin. Let's switch over to the icon view to take a look at them. Once you do that, you open up this bin here by Control double clicking on it or Command double clicking on it in Mac to open it up here in place. You can see we have a wide shot of this waterfall given to us by Digital Juice for use in our course here. Here's the tight shot of that same waterfall. Scroll on down, we have these two horses kind of hanging out there and a tight shot of the two horses. Moving on down the line, we've got the tight shot of this a dressage instructor and a wide shot of the instructor. And a wide shot of this young lady drawing here, kind of a medium wide drawing. And then a medium tight and a tight. So here we're going to put the wide with the sort of medium tight and then the medium wide with the very tight when we do all this editing. So to do this, let's start off with a scenic shot. We'll make a new sequence. Just drag this first shot down to this new item icon. Here we go, drag it down. That makes a sequence with that clip right there called Scenic 1. Let's switch over to the list view so you can see that a little better. I'll scroll down. There's Scenic 1. You can click on it again if you want to and change the name to, let's say, Wide Tight, something like that. So we know what we're working on there. And notice when you make the change here, the change shows up here inside the timeline panel. Okay, here's the shot, and the shot goes like this. It's kind of noisy. I'm going to turn off the audio for a second here. You can see that it has this lovely movement there. And let's see, does it settle down? Kind of settles down, slow movement at the end there. So we can just, let's say, as it gets toward the end, let's just put a tight shot in of the waterfall. The shot itself is almost nine seconds long, and I could Check that out by pressing the down arrow key to go to it and see that that clip ends at 8.26, basically 9 seconds. So it's a pretty long shot, and it's a relatively slow move. Normally you don't like to do edits in the middle of a move like this, but it sort of settles down a little bit toward the end. So I'm going to put my next clip up against this, but maybe slide it in just a bit. So let's take a look at that next shot. We'll go to the scenic number 2. I'm going to double click on it and view it up here in the source monitor. There we go. And it's a tight shot. Let's see if it moves at all. It's kind of loud, so stand by for a second. So it's a static shot. We've got plenty of action going on there, but it's a static shot of the top of this waterfall here. So I'm just going to drag this down and cover up the end of this. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to do an overwrite of part of the clip. We've got the current time indicator where we want to make our edit right about there. I'm going to drag this down on top of the end of the clip. We're going to line it up with the current time indicator like so. I'm going to drag it over. Right now it snaps, but I keep on going to the left and it'll snap to the current time indicator like that. And now we've made that edit. You won't hear the audio now because I've got it muted over here. Let's see how that works. Let's see how the edit works. Goes from there to there. And that is a typical wide and tight edit. It's much more interesting if you can do that. And by the way, it's more interesting when you shoot this if you can get your camera closer to the subject when you get your tight shot as opposed to just using your zoom lens. For a couple of reasons. One, the shot is just more interesting when you're closer. Two, the sound is more interesting too. So get your camera up close if you're going to get a wide and tight shot, if you can. So there's a little wide and tight shot. Let's move on down the line here. We'll go to the horses. We got the dressage exterior four and five. Let's open up both of them inside the source monitor by clicking on one and control clicking on the next or command clicking in Mac and drag them to the source monitor. They open up there. You can see the little drop down list. You got the two guys. Got the tight here and the wide there. Let's just take a look at that. But the camera kind of has to settle down a bit there. There we go, now the camera sort of settled down. A little bit of motion, but not too bad. So I'm gonna have that be the in point once the camera settles down. And that would be plenty of time, four seconds for that clip there. But before I bring it down to the sequencer, let me take a look at the other clip, the tight shot go there. So I wanna make sure that at least they're more or less facing each other when I bring it in. 
So they kind of turn away a lot. So we got to get our shot right toward the beginning here where they're more or less close together because the shot we're going to have this follow has them end up kind of close to each other there like that. We're almost making a matched action edit here. I'm kind of setting you up for that next thing. So we'll go wide here first. We'll drag this down. We can put it off to the side if we want, or we can pop it next to it, whatever you like. I'm putting it off to the side here. I get the separate clip. Then we'll go get that number five there. I want to be able to pick some spot to start. And the start, I think, here would be the beginning, because they're close together there, but they drift apart here later. So I'm going to take that and just drag the whole clip down, like that. Let's see how that works. Let me get the audio back on now. There you go, and that's pretty close. People paying attention might go, wait a minute, that wasn't exactly a matched action, but we have a tight and a wide, and it's reasonably close such that people aren't going to think that we totally goofed that up. And then you could probably trim this guy here just to make the clips about the same length. There you go, so that's a little bit of a wide and tight shot. It's a little more interesting when you go wide and tight. Let's go tight and wide just so that people can also see how that works. I've got these two shots here, Dressage Instructor 2 and 3. I'm going to go clicking on one and Controller Command click on the other and drag them up to the source monitor. There's the wide shot, which is kind of like a reveal. The first shot, you may not know that she's actually inside this place and with an arena there, so it may be good to start tight and then reveal things. At first, you just hear her talking or see her talking, and then the next shot is, oh, she's talking and there's a horse arena going on here. So let's pick a place where she's talking. Let's see what we got here. Ah, we're losing it. You're losing that bend and you're losing that activity because it's taking too long. I, I would have... So I'm thinking we want to have that little sound bite there and not the second part of it. So let's see. Ah. So right there, I'm going to pull back where she starts right there and have that be the end point. Where she finishes that little phrase before the other writer starts talking that activity because it's taking too long. So I'll just cut right there. Have the out point be there. Do I get down to the sequence here in the timeline? Let's go get the wide shot now. And we'll take a look at that and see how that sounds. And then walk. Okay, we don't want and that part. Hind end, hind end. Aha, good job, super. And then go ahead and canter again. Good for you. Let's see You're Okay, let's listen to that for a second. Find a nice little segment. Hind end, hind end. Aha, good job, super. And then go ahead and canter again. Good for you. That's kind of nice. So that'll be the out point. Good for you. Go to the beginning here. Hind end. Aha, good job, super. I think we'll start right there. And then go ahead and canter again. There we go. So that'll be kind of a logical sequence of audio. Drag this down next to it. Let's see how that looks in sounds. Ah, we're losing it. You're losing that bend and you're losing that activity because it's taking too long. And then go ahead and canter again. Good for you. There we go. More or less works together. But you see, it's a tight and a wide this time, which is an interesting way to do your story. You keep viewers' interest that way. You could start your story with the tight shot and people going, okay, who is this woman? What's she doing? And then you start hearing the words canter and things like that. And you see that there's an arena here. You sort of figure out, ah, this is a dressage instruction or some kind of horse instruction. Let's move on down the line here to the other clips, the uh, drawing clips. These clips are not high definition. These are NTSC. If you hover over them, you can see it says 720 by 480, 0 0.9091. Well, 720 by 480 is NTSC, and 0.9 is the aspect ratio for each little rectangle inside the screen. And 0.9 means standard definition. If it was 1.2, that would be widescreen. So we need to make a new sequence here. So I'm going to just start off, though, by taking a look at these guys here in the source monitor. So I click on the first one, shift click on the fourth one, and drag them to the source monitor. There you go. We've got these four clips. Always goes to the last one you drag there. So look at the first one. There's this pretty wide shot there. And the next shot, let's see, you're kind of medium wide. Okay. And then the next shot, we've got medium tight. And the next shot, we've got tight, tight. So we want to go from the wide to the medium tight, and from the medium wide to the very tight. So let's start off by checking this one out. I don't think we need to worry too much about the placement for the edit, other than making sure her hand is actually sort of positioned there when we go to the tight shot, because that's where the tight shot will be. So I'll have that be the out point, go over here to the endpoint like that, and now I need to make a new sequence. Rather than dragging it here, 
want to make a new sequence. But I'll show you what happens if we do drag it there. Put it down here. You'll notice that it's not the same size as HD. And all is not lost when you bring something like this to HD. Like I said before, you can put different kinds of formatted video onto the same sequence. What happens though is that you get this kind of an issue where the clip doesn't really fit into the format, but you can always adjust the size of the clip like this and make it more or less fit here, but we're not worried about that in this particular lesson. So I'm gonna undo that and actually make a new sequence. I'm gonna drag her down to this new item icon, make a new sequence, and there it is with that clip already in it. How convenient is that? And if you look at the sequence you just made there, I'll right click on it and look at the sequence settings, you'll see that it's DVN-TSC, which is what we expect, 720 by 480. I'll close this down. Let's get the second shot here. I'm going to go for the medium tight, which is number three, I think. Yeah, there you go, medium tight. So we've got her hand over here drawing away. So we just go to the medium tight shot here where she's continuing to draw along on this dragonfly. There's an endpoint. It's six seconds long, so we'll cut it down to, let's say, four or so. There we go. Or about five and drag that down. There's our wide and our medium tight. From there to there. And what's kind of interesting is that your viewers don't know exactly what's going on here. So they're kind of going, okay, the young lady at the desk doing writing or something. And then the next shot helps tell your story. Ah, she's doing some artwork here. Very nice. Let's go on down to the medium wide to the super tight. Here's the medium wide. Same kind of routine. We want to make sure that her hand is obviously plugging away there, working on the dragonfly when we're done, which he does throughout the entire clip. So I'll just put an endpoint there. Six seconds right now, we'll make it something less than six by clicking an out point. Drag that down here, maybe next to this thing. There we go, that's the medium wide. And then I'm gonna go get the tight shot. And we have her working there at the head and then changing to the body, which I guess that would be the thorax, right? For you insect folks out there. So I'll just actually show both then. So we'll start on the head there as the endpoint. Let her get to the thorax there and we'll just trim there. Five seconds and drag that down. So now we have this kind of transition from the medium wide to the very tight shot like that. It's always interesting to get up really close. I try to get my camera just a few inches away from some subjects just to really fill up the viewfinder with the shot. So there's your basic rundown on wide shot and tight shot edits and tight shot and wide shot edits. I think it's just a better way to tell a story. It holds viewers' interest, and it's different than the way we normally see the world.